my name is Kim Weston. I was born in Carmel on May 30th, 1953. In the beginning, I went to a one-room school, Paula, Colorado. Uh, one teacher, eight grades. I say that to people nowadays and they think, oh, how old is this guy? But yeah, it was true. One school, uh, one school house, one room, one teacher. I went from there uh, to Sunset School in Carmel and was actually the last graduating class of Sunset. What's kind of interesting is my father in 1927 was the first graduating class of Sunset School. Stayed in Sunset School for a couple years and they had just finished building middle school. So I went from Sunset School to middle school and then on eventually to Carmel High. My passion growing up as a Weston was photography. I started photography when I was six. Of course, spent a lot of time with my dad in the darkroom at a very young age. Not really understanding the whole scope of Weston, you know, when you grow up in a situation like that, it's sort of taken for granted. As I got older, I uh, worked with my dad uh, with the Edward Weston collection. My grandfather was Edward Weston, my father was Cole Weston, and my uncle was Brett Weston. So you can tell right there I come from a long line of photographers. Uh, I started photography very young at six. Actually at Carmel High School, I remember going in and meeting the photography teacher, and he took roll call. As he went through the room, he came to my name, and he says, Weston? Kim Weston? And I raised my hand. I said, here. And he says, of the Weston family? And I said, yes. And he says, well, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I said, I, I'm going because I think it's going to be an easy class to pass. But I did take photography at Carmel High with Jack Savage. Growing up in the Weston family, you didn't sort of think of this great, great photographer, Edward Weston. He was just your grandfather. Same with my uncle and my dad. Uh, it wasn't until much later in my life that I realized, oh my gosh, these were icons of, in the photography world, especially my grandfather. I work in photography today. I live actually at Wildcat Canyon, which is the home of my grandfather. It's a wonderful place to be. We just had a group of educators join us for a visit, a two and a half hour visit of showing the house. It's quite a historical house because it was a house that my grandfather lived in. My grandfather, Edward Weston, was a very famous photographer, not necessarily a very rich photographer, but known the worldwide for his black and white, large format photography. Had a show in, in 1954 at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, was really in the foreground of fine art photography. At that time, photography was struggling, whether it's an art form. My grandfather really was one of the pioneers that, that brought it forward as an art form. My father, Cole Weston, worked more in color, uh, color photography. He was quite well known for that. There again, large format, beautiful color scenes. My uncle Brett, there again, part of the family. The tradition started very early in his life at, at probably around 13. Had a very successful career as a photographer. Where my grandfather never made a lot of money, I think with the acceptance of photography as an art form, uh, my uncle Brett was able to actually make a, a very good living with photography. He loved to buy homes and, and cars, so he had two homes in Hawaii and a house in Carmel Valley. He loved to go between two of them. My father had a house down in Garapata, which we still have today, and that's where I was raised. It actually was a trout farm at the time. That sort of tells you a little bit about you know, my grandfather, my dad, uh, and my uncle. I worked with my uncle for 15 years up till he died. And I also worked with my father with the Edward West co uh, collection for a total of six years. So I really got to know my grandfather through the, the working with his negatives. I was quite young when he died. I was five years old. So I never really got to see him or meet him, but the experience of working with his negatives and actually in the darkroom with him was my sort of connection to my grandfather. I think one of the most important things about this area, the Monterey Peninsula, is the attraction that it, that it gives to artists, not only photographers or painters, poets, they were all living in this area at the same time as they do to, today. It hasn't really changed. Main Street, yes, is paved, but it still uh, thrives with artists and, and a community of artists. So what attracted my grandfather eventually to come here 
was this incredible light and this incredible closeness to the ocean. Point Lobos was one of his favorite places to photograph. He did a, books on Point Lobos and photographed there. He was a very small guy. He was a five foot two and he never drove. So he would carry his big eight by 10 camera with him. And because he never drove and his house was not that far from Point Lobos, a lot of times he would walk. It was one of his favorite places to photograph. But this community and this area is so diverse in its climate and its, its, its opportunities to photograph the Big Sur coast here in Monterey. I mean, it's just a gold mine for, for people of artistic bent. And I always say that because it's not just photography. There's so many wonderful things that happen here. So many great poets, you know, painters. Uh, and that is still happening today. It's still that vibrant here. Yes, there are a lot more people. The place has grown up, but the excitement of, of coming here, of seeing the area and photographing it, it's still, it's still as exciting as it was when they were alive. And, and I'm still alive, and I'm still enjoying it. I really am. I think one of the most important things about living in an area like this is it's not a place that you just come and then leave. Your actual place that you live in, you breathe with it. And my father had a wonderful sense of, of organizing the nature around him. He was also very lucky. He used to carry a, a camera in the car when he took us to school. Some of his great photographs, the Seascapes, which has been on many magazines and calendars, was actually taken while he was driving me to school. That's a moment in time I have never, ever seen that scene again. I've driven that road my whole life. So the opportunity to be able to live here and, and see here every single day, the Paula Corona Ranch, the great image of the cows on the green field, I was with him when he took that photograph. I actually have a picture of him taking that photograph. That was the Stivey Fish Ranch. Well, that I have never seen it that way. And then literally, I've driven by that every day of my life. The clouds have never always been there. You know, it was always something missing. You know, the clouds were there, but the cows weren't there. The grass was not as green as it was. So all this wonderful, just split second, you know, dad could see it and it was there and it was never seen again. So that excitement of living here and growing up here always kept them excited with their cameras and, and look at all the times of, of Edward spent at uh, Point Lobos. He could really understand it. You know, the beach would change and he would see the rocks, you know, and then the next day the rocks would disappear. So you're actually living the area and that being able to live here gave that a great ability to do tons of work and, and really be for both them and, and me and my uncle and, and grandfather very lucky to be able to live in this area our whole lives and you know be born here as i was and and live the western dream you know?